Hello, boys and girls. Hopefully you have enjoyed this month-long excursion through the adaptations of Alice in Wonderland. Did you enjoy your tea, Alice? Why, yes. It was delightful. But you mentioned you had a surprise. What did you have in mind, sir? Alice, sweet Alice, I want to tell you about a man. A man who was as loved and hated and talked about as any man of our time. A man whose exploits, for better or worse, changed the world. That man's name was O.J. Simpson. Who? The running back for the Buffalo Bills? The Juice? The star of the Towering Inferno? Roots? The Naked Gun Trilogy? A man who murdered his ex-wife and her waiter friend and got away with it? Oh, how dreadful. Indeed. Believe it or not, there was a time when O.J. Simpson was bigger and more beloved than Michael Jordan or Tom Brady are today. His was the classic American rags to riches story. He was charming, handsome, had a wholesome family-friendly image, and was accepted by the mainstream at a time when racial divisions were much deeper than they are today. He's still considered to be one of the best running backs in football history. But his fame turned to infamy in 1994 when he was arrested and charged with the double murder of his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman. The ensuing court case was known as the trial of the century. It polarized the public and ripped open deep national wounds around the issues of race, domestic violence, and fame. OJ was ultimately acquitted of the murders in arguably the most controversial verdict in U.S. legal history. Without reiterating every minute detail of the case, the common consensus is that OJ got away with murder. Most of you are probably well aware of the quite literally gory details of the murder case, so I don't have to go into too much detail. But in case you don't, watch the ESPN documentary OJ Made in America and the FX miniseries The People vs. OJ Simpson American Crime Story. OMG, they are so good! After his acquittal, OJ went from football messiah to pop culture pariah. Well, it is finally official. Murder is legal in the state of California. <laughs> Following his shocking acquittal two weeks ago, O.J. Simpson vowed never to rest until the real killers of Nicole Brown Simpson are brought to justice. And the manhunt continues. <laughs> In 2008, he was convicted of kidnapping and armed robbery, serving time in prison up until 2017 when he was released on parole. But on December 14th, 2021, his parole ended early, making him a completely free man. Nowadays, our boy OJ plays golf, a lot of golf, records short opinion videos on Twitter about just about everything, Read all my thoughts and opinions on just about everything. Avoids paying the millions upon millions of dollars that he still owes to the Goldman family and his attorneys. Now, when he was arrested for armed robbery and kidnapping years later, did he call you? No. Why not? Do you know? Up to him. I wouldn't have taken the case in any event. Why? He still owed me money from the first one and continues to feebly convince himself, and some people out there, that he didn't actually kill Nicole and Ron. And I said, well, you think you can kick my ass? And I remember I grabbed a knife. I do remember that portion, taking a knife from Charlie. And to be honest, after that, I don't remember. Except I'm standing there and there's all kind of stuff around and... Um, um, what kind of stuff? Blood and stuff around. You know, we, you know, I hate to say this, but this is like a I'm right, sorry. Right. I know we got to back up again. Right. That's <laughs> you know. okay. But Dane, you say, what does any of this have to do with Alice in Wonderland? Yes, do tell. This Simpson fella sounds positively... Perfect for an Alice in Wonderland TV show on the Disney Channel? How'd you guess? In the early 90s, the Disney Channel aired a show called Adventures in Wonderland, aimed at the same demographic as Sesame Street or The Puzzle Place. You know, one of those early childhood education type of shows. It translated the characters from the Lewis Carroll novel into modern times with storylines focused on solving problems and learning lessons. I didn't have the time to cover the entire show this year, but I did stumble upon this book. It's a picture book adaptation of an unaired episode called White Rabbit Rabbits Can't Jump, with special guest star, The Juice. <laughs> That's right. This is real, people. O.J. Simpson in Wonderland. You can't make this shit up. 
Though the episode was filmed and scheduled to be aired, the book adaptation was released first, before the murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman occurred. But the episode itself never aired due to the murders and the equally controversial trial, making it a lost episode of an already obscure show that we'll definitely never get to see. So how about it, Alice? Are you ready to dive into this relic of the forbidden past? I suppose. Good! So. Let's go ahead and have our celebratory glasses of orange juice. We will take a drink every time something deliciously ironic happens, and we will dive into White Rabbits Can't Jump, or as I like to call it, O.J. Simpson in Wonderland. Okay, so right off the bat, we got ourselves a problem, just with the title of the episode slash book. It's called White Rabbits Can't Jump. Now, obviously, this is meant to be a play on White Men Can't Jump, which would have been a new movie at the time. But if you're going to do that, why get O.J. Simpson? Forget about the future infamy that we know him for today. O.J. Simpson was known for running. Wouldn't you think, Alice, that if you were to get a celebrity to guest star on your children's show, that you would have gotten someone associated with jumping? Like, you know, Shaquille O'Neal or Michael Jordan, they were big at the time. Why not get them? Were they too expensive? I don't know. But you gotta love the close-up here on OJ. He's giving the thumbs up. He's looking all all innocent, you know? Nothing bad can happen when OJ's on the case, right? Uh, so that's what we're seeing on the cover here. On the back, this is what it says on the back. Winning isn't everything. Unless you're on trial for double murder. Then winning really is everything. It's time for the leap year games, and the white rabbit is worried. Even though he's supposed to be great at games such as Leapfrog, this rabbit can't jump. <gasps> wow. He turns to his favorite superstar sports hero for advice on jumping and learns that trying hard and having fun are what makes someone a real winner. Packed with full color photographs, this book captures all the humor and energy of the hit television show Adventures in Wonderland which almost nobody remembers to this day. And it's from Disney Press. So let us dive in, shall we? We shall. All right. So here we go. We got our first photo there of OJ given a really strange look at this even stranger rabbit. Isn't it just amazing that back in the 90s that that would have been the creepiest thing on the cover? My, how the times have changed. So here we go. We're going to open her on up here. Alice, the Red Queen cried, looking at her calendar. Do you know what day it is? It's February 29th, Alice said. I think. That's right, said the Queen. And you know what that means, don't you? That it's the day after the 28th, asked Alice. Well, yes, said the Queen. But I was thinking of something much more important. I'll give you a hint. Today is such a very special day. I could just leap for joy. Oh, now I remember, Alice exclaimed. That means it's a leap year. That's right, said the queen. Once every four years, we add an extra day to the calendar, and February 29th is that special extra day. Just then, the white rabbit arrived with the mail. All an extra day means for me is extra work, he said. I don't think he actually sounded that way in the show, but I'm just going with it. You'll feel better after the leap year games, the queen told him. What are those, Alice wanted to know. Games like leapfrog and jump rope, replied the queen. Everyone in Wonderland competes to see who will win the grand prize trophy. Like the Heisman trophy or a different kind of trophy, I don't know. If it's all the same to you, your majesty, I think I'll skip the leap year games this year, the white rabbit said. Oh, that's a very funny joke, the queen said with a laugh. Get it? Rabbit's going to skip the leap year games. Ha! No, your majesty, I really mean it. I'm not playing, the white rabbit replied. But if you miss the games, said the queen, you'll have to wait four more years before they come again. What's four years, the white rabbit said, skating off, except another 1,460 days. 1,461 days, rabbit, the queen called out. You forgot about February 29th. Well, I don't know about you, Alice. I already, I am at the edge of my sea. What could, Me too. What could possibly happen? I mean, this is what you call drama. I mean, a leap year, it's like, this, this is up there with just some of the most intense 
pieces of fiction I've ever read. Okay, here we go. We got we got the man of the hour here in the photos here. We got the juice and and okay. So look at this here. So we've got the real guy in front of us here, and we've got his picture looming in the background because you know OJ was known for being very modest. You know. Back home, the White Rabbit stared at a poster of his hero, O.J. Simpson. The White Rabbit is now on some kind of watch list. Whenever he was worried or upset, the White Rabbit would use his imagination to think about what O.J. would do in the same situation. Okay, that's uh, that sounds pretty ironic right there. Cheers. You know, whenever I'm in the middle of a life conundrum, I think, what would O.J. Simpson do? I sure wish you were here to help me now, the white rabbit said with a sigh. I've completely run out of excuses for why I can't compete in the leap year games. Suddenly, the poster came to life. Wow, O.J. Simpson, it's really you, cried the white rabbit, right here in my room. I would be a little bit more terrified if O.J. Simpson suddenly appeared in my room. I might even call the police. Actually, I'm not really here, O.J. said. I'm just in your imagination. Oh, good. Whew, that was a close one. Well, why don't you tell me what the problem is anyway? Maybe I can help. Oh, I bet you can help, OJ. Well, you see, the white rabbit exclaimed, everyone wants me to compete in the leap year games, but I don't want to. Why not? asked OJ. I can't jump, the white rabbit cried. Because those are really the most problems that you have when O.J. Simpson appears in your bedroom. The fact that you can't jump. Maybe you might want to run out of the room. <laughs> How do you know if you haven't tried? O.J. asks. I have tried, replied the white rabbit. When I was little, I just couldn't do it. I really sucked as a rabbit. <laughs> well, you're much bigger now, O.J. said. Anyway, the important thing isn't how well you do or whether you win, but that you have fun trying. Yeah, because, you know, OJ, you got where you were just by having fun, not by running for long periods of time, not for practicing, not for being a football prodigy. It was just about having fun, right? Like golf. Golf is really fun for you these days, isn't it? Okay. Now... Just for a pause right here. So you gotta love the the set designs, the costumes on these characters. Like, I don't know about you, but does that white rabbit freak you out? A little bit. Yeah, me too. The March Hare... No, okay, who's the scarier rabbit? The March Hare or the white rabbit? I think they're both equally scary. Well, I kind of like his uh, checkerboard pattern there on his vest. This, this is a little much for me, this uh, construction paper suit that he's got on here. Uh, and he's kind of got this, like, if John Lennon let his hair grow out even more, he's kind of got that look. Now, this this guy is, I know this guy's supposed to be uh, t one of the Tweedles, you know, mm. so they, they tried to get all hip-hop. They tried to make it all cool with the kids. The White Rabbit took OJ's advice and went to the games. Kids, don't take OJ Simpson's advice on anything. All right, said the March Hare. Everyone knows what rabbits are great jumpers. I chose Rabbit to be on my team. Hold on a minute here, said Tweedledum. Who says Rabbit is going to be on your team? I want him on mine. Excuse me, but I think there's something I should explain, said the White Rabbit. I'm not like most rabbits, you see. I'm a terrible jumper. Really, it's true. Again, he sucks as a rabbit. I mean, rabbits are born practically knowing how to jump or at least, you know, leap forward. It's like... He sucks as a rabbit. Now, but coming from a rabbit that on the show, he's like skated on roller skates and stuff. It's like... You know, maybe he really does suck at jumping. But the March Hare and Tweedledum weren't listening. It seems to me we have a problem, the March Hare said. We each want Rabbit on our team. The only fair solution is to flip for him, said Tweedledum. But I don't know how to do a flip, said the March Hare. I have an idea, the Mad Hatter told them. We can flip a coin instead. So the Mad Hatter flipped a coin, and the March Hare called heads as it spun through the air. The March Hare won the toss, so he got to have the White Rabbit on his team along with Tweedledee. Alice and the Mad Hatter were on Tweedledum's team. Already, this book has just sucked you in with its riveting suspense. Great, cried the March Hare. Now our team will win the prize for sure. Perhaps you shouldn't get your hopes up too high, suggested the White Rabbit. As I said, I'm not really all that good at jumping. In fact, I'm terrible. But no one was listening to him.
It's a good uh, foreshadowing for, I think, what's going to go on in a lot of his life. Some people just don't listen. We're counting on you, Rabbit, Tweedledee said, patting him on the back. Oh, dear, the White Rabbit said anxiously. This will never do. Perhaps if I just quietly tiptoe away, no one will notice. That's how I get out of a lot of life's problems, is I just quietly tiptoe away. They don't follow me. Me too. But OJ noticed. Oh, boy. OJ's noticing. We're, we're in trouble now. Just where do you think you're going, he asked the White Rabbit. You weren't thinking of walking out on your teammates, were you? Well, actually, hey, wait a minute, cried the White Rabbit. You're not the real O.J. Simpson. No, it was Charlie. You're just part of my imagination. I don't have to listen to you. Then listen to your conscience instead, said O.J. Your friends are counting on you. But they'll be so disappointed when I let them down, said the White Rabbit. Did you already forget everything I told you, said O.J. All right, the White Rabbit gave in with a shrug. I'll play. Let the games begin, declared the queen. Wait a minute, said the March Hare, shouting. Where's Rabbit? We can't start the games without Rabbit. Over here, replied the White Rabbit. That is, if you really want me. Well, of course we really want you, said the March Hare. In fact, we couldn't imagine playing without you. Oh my, said the White Rabbit. I hope you won't be too disappointed. The first competition will be rope jumping, announced the queen. Let me try this one, Tweedledee said. Don't you think we should let the rabbit do all the jumping? suggested the March Hare. After all, we want to win the competition. I'm not sure it's such a good idea, said the White Rabbit. You see? Rabbit's right, Tweedledee replied. We don't want to wear out our star athlete too early in the competition. Yes, let's wait, agreed the White Rabbit. Perhaps you won't need me at all. After the March Hare and Tweedledee had jumped, Alice and the Mad Hatter stepped up to the rope. We're sure to win this competition, said Alice. Jumping rope is one of the things I do best. Are you known for jumping rope, Alice? Is that one of your hidden talents? I don't want to brag. Uh, you got uh, 70 state championships, do you? I knew it. Me too, said the Mad Hatter as they started to jump. But it wasn't long before the Mad Hatter tripped and got tangled in the rope. Oops, I forgot. It's not rope jumping that I do best. It's rope tying. Silly me. I always get them confused. Oh well, said Alice. Even though we lost, at least we had fun. Already this book is teaching these kids such great moral values. The second competition will be pogo stick jumping, announced the queen. Oh, I just love pogo stick jumping, the March Hare declared. I could do it for hours. You'll have to if you want to beat me, Tweedledum said. We'll just see about that, replied the March Hare. Let the pogoing begin, cried the Queen. Pogoing? Is pogoing even a real word? The March Hare and Tweedledum took their places in the center of the ring. When the Queen gave the signal, they hopped on their pogo sticks and started bouncing. I would insert a clip of bounce by System of Down here, but I won't. Give up, the March Hare asked after a few minutes had passed. Never, replied Tweedledum. Now do you give up? The March Hare asked after several more minutes. Never, replied Tweedledum, and they kept on pogoing, soaring higher and higher with each bounce, which again, here's that dubious word, pogoing. Please, won't you give up now? The March Hare wheezed. He was nearly out of breath. Only if you give up first, huffed Tweedledum. Suddenly a big gust of wind blew them both up high into the air. Where did that come from? Is, uh, is Wonderland in tornado country? I thought that's how you got to... Here's the ultimate plot twist. There's a tornado that comes, and they go from Wonderland to Oz. Yow! cried Tweedledum. Yikes! yelled the March Hare. Oof! cried the Gen Zer. They both crashed to the ground with a great crunching sound. Do you think they're all right? asked Alice. Well, of course they are, the Mad Hatter replied. They landed on their heads, didn't they? A great lesson for kids. Land on your head! I thought for sure I would win, said the March Hare with a sigh. And I thought for sure I would win, said Tweedledum with an even bigger sigh. Well, the important thing is that we both had fun, declared the March Hare. I sense a theme with this book. That's right, Tweedledum agreed. My, they certainly are good sports, said Alice. The very best, said the Mad Hatter. After all the games except one had been played, the Queen added up the scores. It's a tie, she declared. Whichever team wins the next competition will be the winner of the Leap Year Games. It's kind of like the Hunger Games, but a little bit pogo -ier. 
What's the next competition? asked Alice. Why, Leapfrog, of course, the Mad Hatter said. How else can we end the leap year games? With Rabbit on our team, we can't lose, the March Hare announced confidently. Oh, I was afraid of this, said the White Rabbit. There's something I'd better explain. No time to chat now, interrupted the March Hare. The competition's about to begin. The team of Alice, the Mad Hatter, and Tweedledum assembled behind the starting line. The other team, the March Hare, Tweedledee, and the White Rabbit, lined up beside them. On your marks, the Queen shouted. Remember, Rabbit, whispered the March Hare. We're all counting on you. Get set, the Queen called. You can do it, Rabbit, said Tweedledee. Go, yelled the Queen. Alice's team sprang into action. She quickly jumped over Tweedledum, then the Mad Hatter. Meanwhile, the other team still hadn't made a move, because they suck at racing. All right, Rabbit, the March Hare cried. Jump over me. Oh, no, said the White Rabbit nervously. Oh, my. Tweedledum, Alice, and the Mad Hatter continued to leapfrog over each other, moving closer to the finish line with each jump. Hurry up, Rabbit, shouted Tweedledee. They're ahead of us. Oh, well, said the White Rabbit, closing his eyes, bracing for that final moment before the end came. Here goes nothing. He ran as fast as he could, but instead of jumping over the March Hare, the White Rabbit landed right on the March Hare's back. <laughs> what happened? asked the March Hare. You must have moved, replied the White Rabbit, picking himself up off the ground. Yeah, that's right. Just, uh, you know, make up an excuse. That usually works in the adult world. Here, let me try it again. But the White Rabbit's second try was even worse than his first. Wow, look at that. You thought he might have picked something up after the first attempt. I just don't understand what's wrong, he cried. And even though he tried again and again, it was no use. The White Rabbit just couldn't jump over the March Hare. Well, that was fun. Story over. Bye. Is it my imagination? asked the March Hare. Or is the other team winning the race? Mighty perceptive for a rabbit, he is. It's not your imagination, said Tweedledee. In fact, they're almost at the finish line. Just then a cheer went up from the other team. My mistake, Tweedledee added with a sigh. They've already crossed the finish line. Wow. <laughs> they, they must have been really fast. We did it, shouted Tweedledum. We won the competition. I can't believe we lost, said the March Hare. What do you think happened, asked Tweedledee. I don't know, said the March Hare. Again, mighty perceptive for a rabbit. Well, it wasn't my fault, said the White Rabbit. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. It couldn't possibly be my fault. Yeah, denial. That's what OJ would do. Why not, asked Tweedledee. Because the sun was in my eyes, the White Rabbit lied. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> this is great for kids. That's funny, said the March Hare. The sun wasn't in my eyes. Then it was because because Tweedledee kept stepping on my heels. The White Rabbit lied again. <laughs> Be glad that he's not a wooden puppet or else his little nose would keep growing. I did not, cried Tweedledee. What I meant was that it was the hare's fault, said the White Rabbit. He kept moving every time I tried to jump. I never moved once, the March Hare replied. My, what a poor sport you are. Yeah, OJ would never be a poor sport about anything. The poorest, agreed Tweedledee. Well, I don't have to stand here and listen to all these accusations. I'm leaving, the White Rabbit said, stomping off. See, nowadays you would just go on a Twitter rampage, but back in those days, kids, you couldn't do that. You just had to storm off. I've never been so embarrassed in my life, the White Rabbit moaned to himself as he sat alone in the woods. I knew I shouldn't have competed in the Leap Year Games. Just then he heard a familiar voice. I take it the games didn't go so well, OJ said. See, this is when the White Rabbit's sanity just finally starts to break. Because OJ, you know that OJ comes to him at moments of emotional turmoil? I mean, are we, are we supposed to read anything into that? I mean, I'm just saying... It's all your fault, exclaimed the White Rabbit. If I hadn't listened to you, none of this would have happened. Finally, the first sensible thing that he said in this entire book. You know, said OJ, even though your team came in second, you still got a trophy. So look, so look at this. This book predicted the whole like last place trophy thing that kids are so crippled by these days. I don't care, the White Rabbit cried. I didn't want 
want a rotten old second place trophy. I want the first place trophy. Well, you see, I was kind of sticking up for you there, White Rabbit, and then you go and pull this. The White Rabbit watched from the woods while the Mad Hatter, the March Hare, Alice, Tweedledee, and Tweedledum gathered for the Queen's Awards Banquet. Who wants a stupid old Leapia Games trophy anyway, he said. Especially a second place Leapia Games trophy. I always like getting trophies, OJ remembered, even for second place. Now, I know you're all expecting to get trophies today, said the queen, but this year, I'm not giving them to anybody. What? Rip off! But why, asked Alice. We won them fair and square. Yeah, tell her off. But we were good sports too, said the March Hare. Most of us were. Ooh, burn. Well, just because I'm not giving you a trophy doesn't mean you're not getting one at all, the queen said slyly. Ah, oh, so you're tricking us. Just like a real monarch. This year, I've asked somebody very special to hand out the awards. A professional athlete, Mr. O.J. Simpson. And then promptly the queen got beheaded for picking O.J. Simpson to give out her awards. Hey, wait a minute, said the white rabbit. You can't be in two places at once. How can you be here next to me and up there too? I can't, said O.J., who was still standing next to the white rabbit. But then... I'm not re <laughs> but then I'm not real, remember? I'm just part of your imagination. So is that the explanation that he's going with? <laughs> the real O.J. Simpson is standing right over there. So this is, uh, are we meant to assume that the imaginary O.J. is actually Charlie? Is that how this works? Just then the real O.J. Simpson began to speak. I just want to thank you for inviting me to your Leap Year Games Awards Banquet, he said. I'm always 100% behind any... <laughs> okay, there. we got a drink for this one. <laughs> this is too good right here. I'm always 100% behind any games that support fun and good sportsmanship, the real OJ continued. <laughs> he likes the 100% analogy, you know, absolutely 100% not guilty. That's just beautiful. In my book, anyone who competes is a winner. Yeah, and in your book, uh, the night in question is all hypothetical. Imagine that, said the white rabbit. The real O.J. Simpson says the same kinds of things you do. <laughs> you don't have to use your imagination anymore, rabbit. The imaginary O.J. They have to distinguish now, because these could easily run together. You don't have to use your imagination anymore, rabbit, the imaginary O.J. said, fading from view. Why don't you go up there and receive a trophy from the real O.J.? So already we we might have to take a drink for this just because they're imagining kind of the uh, the whole like two OJs, two motivations thing. They're anticipating that. And then we got our final shot here, the Leap Year Games Awards Banquet. The last of the uh, awards that OJ is going to be attending or giving out. And so the White Rabbit joined his friends at the banquet and accepted his second place trophy. I just want to say to all of you that I'm sorry I was such a poor sport. Now I can see that we're all winners. Except that you're not. You came in second place. As the white rabbit watched the other trophies being handed out, he decided that tomorrow he would get a jump start on practicing for the next Leap Year Games. Well, how about that? They ended on another lame pun. And with that, we are officially done with August in Wonderland. Thank you so much for watching. This series was a lot of work, but I had a lot of fun making it, and I hope you had a lot of fun watching it. Did you have fun, Alice? No, not really. Okay. Uh, where are you off to next? Anywhere but here. <laughs> So, the Cheshire Cat, how did you find him? <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> That's the take we're going to use. Um, all right, let's cut him.